Hi, my name is David Fraser. I'm a privacy, internet, and technology lawyer with the Canadian law firm McGinnis Cooper. I also teach internet and media law at the Schulich School of Law at Dalhousie University. On the 1st of March 2024, the Supreme Court of Canada dropped another significant privacy decision. This one ruled that the police have to get a court order before asking a company for an IP address that may lead them to find the identity of a suspect. In this case, it was an investigation into fraudulent online purchases made from a liquor store. The police approached the store's payment processor and asked them for the IP addresses that were associated with the allegedly fraudulent transactions. The payments processor did not require a production order and handed over the information voluntarily. The police then sought and obtained a production order requiring the internet service provider to provide the customer name and address associated with that IP address. Now that production order is often called a Spencer order because of a 2014 decision of the Supreme Court of Canada that said the police require a court order to get a customer name and address that's associated with a particular IP address from a particular time. In the bike of its case, the individual was arrested and charged. At his trial, he argued that the police should not have gotten the IP addresses without a court order. He argued that without a court order, getting the IP addresses was a search under Section 8 of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms that protects everyone from unreasonable searches and seizures. At trial, the judge found that there was no reasonable expectation of privacy in the IP addresses held by the payments processor. Now, if there had been a reasonable expectation of privacy in the bare IP addresses, the police could only get it with a court order or if there was something called exigent circumstances. On appeal to the Alberta Court of Appeal in a 2-1 decision, the Court of Appeal upheld the lower court finding. The dissenting judge would have allowed the appeal finding a reasonable expectation of privacy in the IP addresses. And again, if there was a reasonable expectation of privacy in that information, the police would have had to have obtained a production order. On appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada in a 5-4 decision, the majority of the court held that there is a reasonable expectation of privacy and that a production order would be required to obtain the IP addresses that had been associated with the fraudulent transactions from the payments processor. Writing for the majority, Justice Kara Katsanis explained that if Section 8 of the Charter, which provides the protection from unreasonable search and seizure by the state, if it was to meaningfully protect the privacy of Canadians in today's digital and online world, it has to protect IP addresses. An IP address is the link between an internet user and their online activity. The majority of the court highlighted that in order to live in this digital modern world, one has to do much of it online, and this necessitates disclosing IP address information to a whole range of third parties. While the IP address may not directly identify an individual, it can be connected to an individual or the individual's behavior can be inferred by analysis of data associated with the use of the IP address. One of the things that I find really important about the decision is how it reflects upon living in our modern digital online society, where third parties often have a lot of information about individuals that's just incidentally collected because of modern technology. Part of my law practice involves advising companies who receive requests from the police and others for access to customer data. This decision makes it even easier to tell the police to come back with a warrant. The court was clear that leaving the decision to disclose information to private corporations is unacceptable in the context of the Charter. The majority wrote to leave it to the private sector to decide whether to provide police with information that may betray our most intimate selves strikes an unacceptable blow to Section 8. And then the majority said, recognizing a reasonable expectation of privacy in IP addresses would ensure that the veil of privacy that Canadians expect when they access the internet is only lifted when an independent judicial officer is satisfied that providing this information to the state will serve a legitimate law enforcement purpose. At the end of the day, the majority found that a request by the police for an IP address is a search for the purposes of Section 8 of the Charter, and the police would require a court order generally in the form of a criminal code production order, in order to obtain it. Though it was not part of the decision specifically, there are some additional factors that companies should keep in mind. The risk is generally on the police regarding whether they can obtain the information and subsequently use it in the prosecution. The decision did not focus on the payments processor or whether their disclosure was lawful. In Alberta, the payments processor would be subject to the Personal Information Protection Act of Alberta, which does permit disclosures to law enforcement agencies in Canada to assist in an investigation, one, undertaken with a view to a law enforcement proceeding, or two, from which a law enforcement proceeding is likely to result. Our federal privacy law would only permit the disclosure where required by law. 
You see, the Spencer decision that I mentioned earlier essentially said that in Section 7, Sub 3, C.1 in Pipeta, lawful authority would have to be sub something substantially more than just a legitimate police investigation. A criminal code production order would create such a lawful compulsion and satisfy the required by law part. What does this all tell us? It tells us that the court remains vigilant to consider reasonable expectation of privacy for the purposes of the Charter Section 8 in light of evolving technologies where more and more information essentially has to be spread to third parties and these repositories of information are not there for the cops to dip into without judicial authorization. I note that as with the Spencer case before, the police and prosecutors have argued that finding a reasonable expectation of privacy in customer names and addresses in Spencer and bare IP addresses in Bikevitz would irreparably harm law enforcement. That was certainly proven to be grossly overstated with Spencer, and I expect it's also the case with Bikevitz. But I do expect that we will see the police in Canada clamoring for an alternative to production orders to facilitate access to this sort of information. We've seen it before under the name lawful access, and I did a full video on that a while ago, and I'll link to it below. But ultimately, we need to remain vigilant that privacy rights are always protected. I hope this has been interesting and useful. I try to put out a new video every few weeks, so if you're interested in this sort of content, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for other topics to cover. And of course, feel free to share this with anyone who you think may be interested in hearing about Canadian tech and privacy law. Thanks for tuning in.